All right, so yesterday was the final public hearing with Illinois State Police fielding public comments from members of the public about the gun ban registry. We've got less than two works, uh, two two months, rather. Uh, somebody just said on the, the chat they're going to work, and that's how my mind works. I apologize. Uh, but we got less than two months before the gun ban registry deadline of January 1st or people could face criminal penalties. You heard uh, during the public comments when we reviewed that in the previous segment that um, you have uh, – Illinois State Rifle Association, Ed Sullivan, uh, he said that, you know, he doesn't know why anybody would want to comply with this. Well, he was asked by members of the media uh, about what he plans on doing and if he plans on defying the law. And uh, Sullivan was clear about, well, what his plan is for compliance. That statement was uh, made by Ed Sullivan, citizens of Illinois. Um, registration of firearms to government always leads to confiscation. And so I'm not going to comply with this law. I will comply with the law. I will move my firearms out of state, but I will never register a firearm. Um, so no, that is uh, Citizen Ed Sullivan making that statement. Well, and I asked, you know, a, a simple question, which is an important question as to you know, why. Why would somebody not register their firearms? Why not? Because what will happen next, and people will think that maybe this is a tinfoil hat response, but registration has always, in the history of the world, led to confiscation. And so the next Highland Park shooting that we have, they will now have a list of people that have these firearms and they will come for them uh, after they pass the legislation to, in essence, uh, ban what they term as assault weapons. Now, he was asked more about the compliance issue, how he's going to comply. I uh, wanted uh, some clarity. Are you just not going to register? Are you going to sell your firearms? Are you going to transfer those firearms? How's this going to be handled? No, I, I know exactly what happens. For the first offense, I get a misdemeanor. For the second offense, I get a felony. It won't happen to me because I will not have a firearm in this state. I'm going to comply with the law. I'm just not going to register the firearm. Okay, so, so, again, he's going to move them out of state. And think about this. Uh, people who don't but, have but those But what about means? folks that don't have the ability to move their firearms out of state? I mean, think about the cost that some of the people that just, they just can't pay for it. I mean, this is a completely regressive law against anybody that doesn't have the means. I happen to have the means, and I live right on the border, so I can move them to a storage unit across the way. So obviously, uh, there's that option that people have is to move their firearms, but it being regressive, it's not just regressive for certain people. It's also the question of kiosks, people who don't want to register their firearms through the Internet who don't have an email address, they can go to a kiosk. And I think there's, what, four kiosks across the state, all over the state, but there are no kiosks in the city of Chicago. No, no. I, I, I mean, to comply with this law, you, you either register your firearm or you move it out of state or you become a peace officer, I guess. So what does that mean for people in Chicago that want to be able to keep firearms uh, that may be considered now assault weapons? They are going to have to make the determination on their own um, unique set of circumstances. If you want to register, then register. I'm not saying, I mean, I know some people that are going to, um, and that's fine. I don't, I don't issue anybody a will. I mean, do what is best for you. I have the ability to comply with the law by moving them out of state, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm curious if uh, some of you watching live uh, in the comments, if you want to share, what are your plans? I, I see a lot of comments of people saying don't comply and people on X saying, you know, don't comply, don't comply. Listen, I'm not uh, an attorney. I'm not your legal advisor. I'm just a, a reporter who is, you know, telling you what's being talked about, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, what do you plan on doing? Ed Sullivan saying that he's likely moving these out of state uh, to a storage unit or something. Uh, do you have the means to do that? Do you not? have the means to do that um of course some of you might not even be comfortable answering that question because you just don't want anybody to know and that was something that uh, state senator terry bryant she was asked specifically by one reporter you know does she have firearms that she uh you know feels that she has to register and she said that she's not going to answer that question uh but she did take other questions and in particular had some criticisms for the hearing yesterday in caseyville here's uh, state senator terry bryant after the hearing uh well first of all it's a very very large room as you can hear it's very loud there's no microphone system set up um the rules are being rushed through as emergency rules i was hopeful that if they're required to do three hearings that we might actually have the opportunity to listen to citizens. Um, in reality, what I saw here today was if you didn't know that, that you had to submit your questions in writing in advance, you really didn't get heard. 
And so there were a lot of people here today, I think, that would have liked to have been heard. But to, my, to what I could barely hear in the, close to the back of the room, they weren't really given that opportunity. Um, I would say one other observation that I have is the person who's tasked with creating these rules right now is Director Kelly. And he's not here today. And I saw this once before when we were talking about closures at Pontiac and Vandalia for Department of Corrections, and the director of the Department of Corrections didn't show up. The directors need to be at these meetings in order to hear from the citizens. Now, I don't blame the state police because they've been given a crappy law to try to write rules for. I blame the legislature for putting, putting this bill through. It's a law that should never come to uh, fruition. And uh, I think you heard from Darren Bailey today that there's going to be a whole lot of folks that are not going to be registering their firearms. And then I don't even know from the statements that were made today, what are the state police going to do about it? So uh, they've said that this enforcement is going to be up to uh, state's attorney's offices. But what advice does uh, Senator Bryan have for her constituents? My advice to them is wait till December 31st to see what the U.S. Supreme Court does. Don't do anything until then. At that point, each individual will have to make their own decision about what they're going to do with their firearms. And she was also asked about the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules. That bipartisan legislative panel that oversees administrative rules like that of the state police and their emergency rules, they meet today. Here's Terry Bryant. Well, they need to deny the emergency rule request. They need to send them back to the drawing board. Because obviously, if a rule is written so poorly that the people who have to write the rules for it and then implement the rules that they've created, and they don't even understand. I heard more questions today from the state police than I heard answers from them. So while the hearing was going on, I was texting a member of JCAR telling them this hearing, although the state police that are here attempted to do a good hearing, it was a farce. So the uh, public didn't have a chance to really hear what was going on, a lot of questions. But how do you get Democrats on JCAR to recognize people are having a problem here? Yeah, well, you know, the suburban legislators have to deal with some suburban individuals, right? They need to actually, um, they need to be leaders in this. And leading doesn't mean that you create laws that violate people's constitutional rights. I'm very disappointed in the judge's ruling from the appellate court basically saying that you can make up rules that have to do with your constitutional rights when specifically the Second Amendment says that your rights shall not be infringed. And so um, I would say to those in JCAR, you need to start this process all over again. In fact, um, there need to be no emergency rules made for this because State police have had plenty of time to create the real rules. We should not enter into this with rules that may or may not be the final rules for a law that may or may not stay into in effect. And we still don't even have answers. If people register their firearms before January 1, what happens if the Supreme Court does overrule this law? What happens to all of those registrations in the future? We have a bill that says that all of those uh, records have to be destroyed, and we cannot get President Harmon or Speaker Welch to call those bills. So uh, the veto session uh, final three days is today. There's a lot going on. If you guys aren't tuning in every morning uh, to, to the reviews we do, uh, I'm keeping you guys posted on not just the gun litigation, but also what's happening at the Illinois State House. J Car meets today. Final three days of fall veto session start today. Are they going to take up the question of those who purchased firearms when there was a court injunction, uh, keeping them harmless? If indeed the law does have the January 1st deadline to register actually kick in with possible criminal penalties, so many questions. Former State Senator Darren Bailey, uh, former Republican gubernatorial candidate against Pritzker, uh, and the possibility of banning firearms was indeed a campaign issue. Uh, in the 2022 election, Bailey did not win, of course, but uh, he was there and we heard his public comments in the previous segment. Uh, he took some questions from members of the media and in particular, he uh, he talked about uh, the, the criticism he has of the meeting yesterday. I think the Illinois State Police are doing the best that they can with what they have. I'm terribly frustrated that this Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly didn't take the time to come here on his home turf to address his friends and his neighbors. I'm really bothered about that. I'm bothered that they uh, that they held these at 9:30 in the morning. 
uh, I think I see the writing on the wall and I'm not happy about that. So, uh, but at the end of the day, the Illinois State Police, I believe, are doing the best that they can. They have been put uh, in a difficult situation. And, you know, I don't think there's any accident that there was, I, I'm frustrated there was no PA system. Um, so, yeah, he, he went on and was asked about, uh, you know, the advice he has for other firearms owners. Because Bailey said that, you know, you're going to have to take the guns from his cold, dead hands. Um, but what advice does he have for firearms owners with that January 1st deadline down the pike? My advice is that I believe this is unconstitutional. I believe that this will be stricken down by the courts eventually. And, um, I you know, people are going to have to do what they feel comfortable with. I, for one, will not comply. Are you? Why won't you comply? Because it's unconstitutional. Someone's got. That's what makes this nation so great. Someone, somebody, we the people have to stand. It's time. The Second Amendment protects the first. History shows us the way the countries go that take firearms away. We've seen. You know, we've seen in my last four years in Springfield. This is the stepping stone. This is the beginning. One little one. Just take care of this, and everything will be okay. Nope, nope. It, there's more coming, and I believe that Governor J.B. Pritzker's end goal is to strip Americans of their firearms. So uh, the question also to him about uh, the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules and should they uh, block the administrative rules? Because if you remember last month, uh, they voted but didn't pass a measure to to object and then they did some recommendations but they could suspend i will not comply with any infringement on our second amendment rights that was given for a very distinct purpose and i think we're living in days now when i think we're understanding what that purpose is more and more should jay carr vote to suspend the rules absolutely i hope they do but unfortunately you know many people don't understand what how j car consists of you know six democrats and six republicans so you essentially have to have two from one of the parties to to go with the other and it's election year do you see that happening i don't think so so again clearly a lot of questions still persist as to what's going to happen with the ban on firearms in the state of illinois uh and for those of you uh keeping score let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at on litigation against gun laws uh in particular let's uh see where we're at with the thomas mag case here we are with uh uh, just a brief overview. Uh, you've got the latest action on the docket being a response um, from uh, Thomas Mag's attorneys. This was after the public hearing last month uh, and after uh, you had the state police and the uh, governor's office file last minute filings, uh, like 400 pages. Uh, so after the hearing, you did have um, uh, the response from Mag. That's it. So we're still waiting on Stephen McGlynn, the uh, Southern District Judge, to actually issue a ruling there. But you also have uh, the case that federal firearms licensees of Illinois were granted an amended complaint. They filed that amended complaint, uh, a judge saying that uh, the state has until January 31st to respond to that complaint. But if you look at that uh, in, uh, filing, uh, the most recent one from state police, uh, they outline that indeed they have uh, they were looking for uh, the federal firearms licensees of Illinois to file a preliminary injunction motion by Friday. But while they were preparing and check out the interview I had with Costas Morris, uh, from the uh, Mitchell and Associates representing FFL of Illinois from yesterday. He talked about how they were ready to file that preliminary injunction motion when the Seventh Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals vacated the Southern District's uh, ruling. So still some back and forth, very much alive in the courts. We'll see what happens with both of those cases. But another Supreme Court case that's on the uh, docket here, uh, you've got uh, you know the, the uh, Rahimi case, and this deals with uh, you know, orders of protection uh, and the like. So uh, that's actually going to be heard today by the U.S. Supreme Court. So this is out of Texas. Um, we've seen this play through and looking at the dockets, and we're now at the uh, the hearing dates, and you can actually listen to oral arguments that begin in about 30 minutes. You just got to go to the U.S. Supreme Court's website, uh, and you can uh, find the uh, the oral arguments, and if you listen live, you'll be able to hear those arguments from the U.S. Supreme Court in that Rahimi case. So a lot of eyes on that. So that's just a little bit of an update on where we're at with litigation, but obviously still some substantial questions. Uh, and uh, we, we have a lot at play, uh, including the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules today. Uh, I will be there on the ground in Springfield to uh, watch the proceedings and to report out. So we'll review that tomorrow. Uh, we've also got the final days of fall veto session 
Today is the final start of the last three days of the calendar year. Uh, will they take up uh, a, a moratorium on uh, nuclear uh, construction? Will they uh, possibly you know, move to uh, keep the Invest in Kids Act? Uh, will they uh, you know, possibly deal with a measure to allow for individuals to be held harmless if they purchased firearms when an injunction was in place? There's a lot that's going to happen in the next three days. Be sure to stay tuned with Bishop on Air each and every weekday morning. Uh, we review what happens at the Illinois State House, but we also delve into the latest in litigation about the state's gun and magazine ban here in Illinois. Uh, but also tomorrow, going to do a council corral. So that's going to be here with Bishop on Air. Guys, have yourselves a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Incredible to see the, uh, the numbers of people watching live. Uh, definitely blows me away. Uh, so I greatly appreciate it. And uh, you guys have yourself a wonderful rest of your... It's only Tuesday. Are you kidding? Come on. Uh, it feels like it should be Friday. Can't be the weekend fast enough. All right, guys. Take care.